you Dr. Opat. Dr. Opat is like my brother, you know? And uh, we have known each other for a long time. And uh, it's just like a family friend, okay? All right, uh, I'm Rosina. Uh, I have uh, two students with me, uh, Ikram, and another one is uh, Shafika. So we work together. And um, since this is a whole afternoon session on MOOCs, uh, they are uh, MOOCs, so I divide the first one and a half hours on uh, how to develop uh, edX first, how to develop the MOOCs. I hope you all have a laptop. Do you all come in with a laptop or you just listen on the It's a workshop, so you didn't bring any laptop. Just uh, listen. Yeah. Uh, I only see a few of you only got laptop. The rest all just listen first. Okay, uh, doesn't matter. So this is about me. Uh, my major is in e-learning and uh, I work in USM for Ministry of Science Malaysia since 1994. So, very long time, like uh, 25 years already in University of Science Malaysia. And um, my passion is in writing. I write a lot of books in e-learning and uh, I publish uh, more than th three books already in e-learning, but my first multimedia book was in year 2000. So if you Google my name, you can see that was my first Malay book in Malay language in multimedia in education. And um, I started from old technology, right up to now we are talking about augmented reality, about the new technology, like how we watch uh, this morning's talk, all about the sophisticated uh, futuristic technology, so I also moving into that arena now, okay? And um, uh, next, I come from Penang. I hope uh, everyone knows uh, where is Penang. Penang is a small island uh, of four million people. Well, although it's a small island, but the population is four million, <laughs> okay? And then uh, USM is located in the main campus in an island, next. And we, have, uh, we are very lucky, very fortunate to have two big, long, longest bridge in the world. And one of the bridge that is the second link one is uh, 24 kilometers long. Okay. Have you all been to this bridge? Not yet. I think you should follow me and I take you all go <laughs> across. Not virtually, but on the bridge. <laughs> okay. All right. Next. Uh, next. Okay, so have you all seen my campus? Have you all been to uh, University of Science Malaysia campus? Never been. So just now virtually you see my campus. It is a big campus. It is about uh, 30,000 students in the main campus. And then we have about 10,000 medical students in Kelantan campus. And we have about 5,000 engineering uh, students in another campus. So all in all, we have uh, four campuses in Malaysia itself. Uh, dentistry in another campus. We have uh, our main campus, uh, science and social uh, humanities and arts in the main campus. And then we have uh, dentistry. Next. And uh, now we talk a lot about ranking, ranking and ranking. So I just purposely just put there just to show off <laughs> that uh, my university is also in the 49th uh, place now. And uh, we cannot beat University Malaya, which is the oldest university in uh, Malaysia. Uh, we are now, last time we were top, like second ranking after University Malaya. But now we went down to fourth place already. Uh, university Pertanian or University Putra Malaysia has topped top us. Now they become second. And then uni National University of Malaysia, UKM, has become third. And don't know how, somehow or other, my USM become fourth placing already. So, I think because of the budget, because no budget, no research, no writing, no publication, so it just go down, 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 down. 
So I think it's the same for everyone. Uh, budget constraints, so there is no research, so no publication. But we are trying, we are trying our best. All lecturers now in USM are being pushed so hard that we have to publish at least uh, Scopus paper, Q1, Q2, Q3. I think the same in Thailand also. Okay, everyone the same, facing the same. Okay, next. And this is the medical campus in Kelantan. It's a very old campus. And by the way, USM is 50 years old this year. It was built 1969. And this year we celebrate our golden anniversary that is uh, 50 years. This is medical. Next. This is engineering. Next. We have uh, dentistry also. Dental Institute in Bertam, somewhere near Penang. Next. And we have a, a group of uh, scholars we sent to Karnataka in India, Belgium, where the students work with the Indian professors there, use their facilities there. We pay the fees there for them, but they graduate uh, under USM uh, certificate. So this is like a, a franchise program, a twinning program. Next. And this is my center. Uh, it's called PTPM in short. Is a center for instructional technology and multimedia. Okay, next. So, this uh, today's uh, for one and a half hours. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, MOOCs first. The next, only I will integrate AR into MOOCs. Okay, so everyone have uh, developed MOOCs before? Have you all worked with MOOCs before? Have you developed MOOCs before? No. Have you developed MOOCs before? That's good. Have you developed MOOCs before? Good. Have you know MOOCs? Have you developed MOOCs before? Built a MOOC. You have. Okay. No good. Have you built before? No. Good. Have you developed MOOCs before? You have. Oh, no good. <laughs> have you developed MOOCs before? You have done MOOCs. Built a MOOC, your own course by using MOOC. Have you built MOOC before? Never good. Okay, so I like to hear that you never built so that I can introduce to you all better. If you know, then you'll be boring for this session for a while. Okay, so by the way, our friend, where are you from? England. Oh, which part of England? Kent. Oh, okay. You're a lecturer in where? In, in sorry? In Bangkok. Oh, in Bangkok. Oh, okay, good. Which, which, which uni? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Welcome. So, and then I'm going to talk about examples of MOOCs using edX because uh, uh, Thai Cyber University has granted us a grant to develop a MOOC. Of, uh, then I suggested this topic, AR, through MOOCs. Okay? So, and then um, just to tell you all, uh, good designs of MOOC by three universities and then how to use edX, and then only we come into activities. So I thought that everyone will bring a laptop because I purposely uh, say that please install Unity and Visual Basic, um, Microsoft Visual, before you come into this workshop. Okay, but if you don't bring, never mind, we just listen only. I hope you can go back and do, okay? But I have video. If you want a video, you can take the video with you also later on to develop the moves. Okay? All right, next. So, you have heard uh, the whole one and a half day already, the whole yesterday and today, whole morning about MOOCs and all the sophisticated technology for fourth industrial revolution. And uh, we don't know how are we going to cope as an educator, as an academic, are we going to go up to that extent. But somehow or rather, like I say, I started from old technology. Until now, we have to move according so that we are not left behind. Okay? Sometimes our mindset says we cannot, we cannot do, we cannot do. But somehow or rather, we must change also. So like I do training to some senior lecturers that who is going to retire, and uh, they say they never use computer, they never use uh, Moodle, they don't use uh, uh, LMS, they use book or they teach literature, they just teach, uh, use book and they have students graduate, become professors, director, they challenge me, you know. So what? What's your technology? I teach 
using chalk and talk, just talking and old uh, slides and I can graduate students with high position. But I say, no, this is the time that you have to change. This is the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, that, uh, but the diffusion of innovation, Rogers, that is the old legged come up to the new uh, bond. So now we are in the MOOCs. At one stage, when I developed MOOCs, they say MOOC is dead, like what you see just now on the slides. But actually, it's how you cope, how you do with MOOCs. Okay? So online course aimed to unlimited participation. It is interactive support. At one stage, we have X MOOC and C MOOC. So if you know MOOC, what is the difference between X MOOC and C MOOC? Don't know. Anybody know? Don't know. Okay, don't know is good, better for me. <laughs> so the X MOOC is like edX, extended. X is extended MOOC. Extended MOOC, that means, uh, but it cannot, it has limitation. There is no interaction between student and teacher, teacher or teacher, something. There is some limitation there. The C MOOC, can you guess what does C men stand for? The C. The C. C, C, yeah? Sorry? Carbon? Common? Mm, not so correct yet. C. The C MOOC. Opat, don't say anything. Opat must keep quiet. The C MOOC. Community? Mm, little bit, nearly, nearly, nearly the same already. Nearly to my answer already. The C. Who can answer? I give some one sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the C. Ah, you nearly right. You nearly, nearly have connections. <laughs> Very good. You know, connectivist. By by whom do you know? Also don't know. <laughs> by George Seaman. Okay. So there is a difference. At one stage was X move like the American moves. The C MOOCs is the Canadian MOOCs by George Seaman. Okay, recent and widely researched developed distance. They were first introduced in 2008 and emerged popular in 2012. You know? So at one, I'm a trainer in my university science. I always train all the young lecturers and all, all the senior lecturers. So the senior lecturers are very uh, stubborn. They say, no, I don't know how to use I old technology. Some of them even don't have mobile phone. You know, there are lecturers, there are no mobile phone in this age, so you'll be surprised also. You know, when you want to contact them, it's very difficult to contact them at this age. You know, so next. So, most like you have listened is massive open online course. Sometimes you have the S, MOOCs, and sometimes you have no S. So, MOOC, one course, the S is many courses. Okay, massive. All right, next. All right, introduction to MOOCs. So you know, now I give you the answer here. So 2008 by Stephen Downs and George Stevens. So connectivism and connective knowledge taken by 25 students at that time in class courses. And now it has boomed up to 2,000, more than millions, a um, few thousands already, yeah? 2,300 internet users where the C MOOCs has got... Uh, Wiki, blog, RSS, Moodle, it can have social media. Whereas the edX, they have no social media. Betul tak? The edX, it has got no social media. And then 2011, the introduction to artificial intelligence has enrollment over 160,000 students worldwide and uh, focus less on interaction between students, contributed MOOCs development in American education. So it has got some artificial intelligence. Actually, you are in using artificial intelligence indirectly, which you don't know. You didn't realize. Are you a Facebook fan or not? Are you a Facebook fan? Nobody here. Who? How many has got no Facebook account? Only one. <laughs> no Facebook account. My student taught me to have a Facebook. You know, I have my Facebook account. In year 2008 itself, I already have Facebook account. 
And then my son, my daughter said, Ma, you have Facebook account? Ah, check and see. I already got Facebook account. Become, that means I'm earlier than them also. You know, although I'm in the baby boomer. Ah, so you must have a Facebook account. Okay? Actually, Facebook is good. It's not to say that it's not good. It's really good for immediate connection. You know, it's really good if how you use it. Uh, okay. And then 2012, uh, multiple creators. Then you have Udacity in February by Sebastian Toon. Then you have Coursera. And then you have MIT. And then some people will say, why we must follow the West when we are the Asian type? Why can't we produce our own MOOC? You know? Why we want to follow the Western country with all the sophisticated uh, education? You know? They always say that uh, you, you produce graduate without the soul. Whereas we all Asian graduate must have the soul, must have humanity values, must love each other, must respect each other, must have all the religion uh, thing, ethnicity, ethics and all that. Whereas the West one got no uh, talk about ethics and all that. So they, they don't agree with the Western MOOCs. So now we come up with the ASEAN MOOC. So every country in ASEAN, 10 countries, I did a research, 10 countries have their own MOOC. Indonesian MOOCs, Philippine MOOCs, Singaporean MOOCs. Now Thai MOOCs also is coming up. And uh, Dr. Opat is also very into the MOOC. They have their PSU MOOCs also. And then Thai Cyber University, they started like you, when you heard in the conference, like three years ago, okay? All right, next. And then you can see the MOOC starts to grow, you know? Okay, I want to ask you all the difference. What is OER? OER. And what is MOOC? You, you see in the screen this morning, OER, MOOCs. Which one is bigger? OER bigger or MOOC bigger? Guess. Wrong also, never mind. OER bigger. OER is Open Educational Resources. So MOOC is inside OER. MOOC is subset of OER. You get me or not? So when you want to write a paper, when you ask your student to write, they always confuse. They don't know which one is OER, which one is MOOC. So you must explain to them, OER is the big picture. It can be open book, it can be e-book, it can be e-content, e-kiosk, e, e everything. The MOOC is just one of it only. And it has got some platform to use. Whether OER is any platform that can be used. So MOOC is subset of OER. Okay, not? I'm like teaching student like in the class tutorial, like in the classroom now. <laughs> So a teacher will never be a, will always be a teacher. Eh? When I talk to outside in the market also, the person that sells the vegetable or fish to me, are you a teacher? You teacher? I say, hey, how you know I'm a teacher? You talk like a teacher, you know? So it's actually my nature already because I wanted to be a school teacher from day one, from primary school, from kindergarten, I wanted to be a teacher. I play like a teacher. I talk to the front of the classroom, act like a teacher, like nobody, but I just talk, talk, and pinpoint in front of the classroom. So I'm talking to you also like a, like a, I treat you like very small kid, and I'm talking like a mother, like how I treat my two uh, students also, until people say, I take care of my two little children here, you know? So my nature is like that. So now you can see it's like 2,000 new courses, but I think that thing has boomed up more and more already. But you can see there is still a gap that we talk so far in, but in real life, the university, how many of you has developed MOOC? Like now in this group here, be honest, maybe some of you never even see what is MOOC or so, never even do MOOC or so. But when you see boom, bam, boom, bam, whoa, talk so high, talk about futuristic, just press button here, press button there, you go here and there, like, you know, we use, but we don't do it. So as our students also, they are multitasking. They have two phones in their pocket. They even ride the motorbike, they can text their friend without looking and driving. You know, they know which keypad to press ready the, the, on the phone, 
You know, they are multitasking. But when you ask them to do assignment, they cannot do proper assignment because they don't know what to do also. They are social media people. They know they are Twitter. They have all the all WhatsApp or whatever, Line or whatever. They know. But when you ask them to do a proper assignment, they cannot do because they don't know how to apply. Okay? And then next. So these are the examples of MOOCs using uh, edX, EX, DX. This is the American one. Huh? So you have many courses, some like computer science. Okay? So this is the interface. And then you have maths courses, maths, all right? And then you have uh, education teacher training, you have health, you have uh, social economics, you have uh, food, you have uh, whatever, business, what else? Tourism, what else? So many. Huh? If you search now. Okay, next. So, how, if you want to develop MOOCs, that shows that you need to know a good design of how to put a MOOCs. And that, fe that features that is, first you must have the title. The title of the MOOC. And then you, the very first thing I ask you all, what is the very first features that you want to write when you want to develop your MOOC? What is it? The very first thing as a teacher, as an instructor, now you are doing online course. You are not teaching in front of the classroom. So now you have to change your mindset. You are going to teach. This one is you. This one is your teacher. And you are going to tell your student to read this. That This is instruction ready by itself. Automatically, like this is an instruction. So you have to tell them everything. When they see this interface, they already understand what you want. So the very first thing, the very first point in MOOC, what is it? Title, of okay, okay. The next one? The next one. Very important. Very important. Faster, faster. Yeah, you clever girl, huh? you you so smart, huh? The second one is the learning outcomes. The learning outcomes. Last time we say objective, learning objective, but now the term objective is old-fashioned, really. Okay. Last time we say that we must know knowledge, but now we don't use knowledge much. You you will see the word competence. So the word competence is now is a buzzword, competence. Even in Europe, in UK, I just came from there. The word competency or work-based learning is the key word now. Okay, all right. Now, so learning outcomes is the second part that you must know. That is the features. After the learning outcomes, do you know how to write learning outcomes? It must be a verb. It must be a, a verb that you cannot say the student will know how to do this. The word no is wrong because why I say no? The no is too subjective to measure how you want to make sure your student know. But if you say the student will illustrate, the student will... Uh, draw something that can measure. The student can uh, define the operational definition. The student, the verb. Do you know Bloom's taxonomy? Ah, you go and check Bloom's taxonomy. So there is a comprehension, a cognitive, affective, and psychomotor uh, verbs. So you choose from there. Okay. If I want to explain too long, ready? Okay. Then after that, you will have the course list and then the introduction to the uh, instructors or the instructor's photo just to motivate the learner. Because in MOOCs, they won't see the student face to face like this. They will see the students, they, the students will see the instructors through the photo like that. So just to let the students know these are the instructor, not ghosts teaching them. You know, not? All right. Okay, next. 
And then the next features is the course title, and then you have the university, you have some graphics there, and then the learning outcomes, then you have the in introduction, the program information, and then you can share to social media if you have the link there, the Facebook or whatever. So these are the basic interface when you want to develop a MOOC, you must have like this. Not just text and uh, a few pictures here and there, but the picture also not relevant to the text. The picture must be related to the text also, not you talk about apple, you put orange, cannot. Okay? But if you talk about apple, you, talk, you put some Granny Smith or uh, Royal Gala, something like that. The name of the apple that related to the topic. Okay, not? Next. And next is the cost summary, the learning outcome. You see, nearly the same, the interface of the MOOC. So when you want to develop a MOOC, you must do something like this. You must have the course outcome, the course title, and then the introduction, and then you put your photo, your, your nice photo, not your boyfriend's photo or your girlfriend's photo. Put your photo. Some of you, like I teach Middle East students, they don't want to see me. They always cover their face or they can hear voice only, you know. So sometimes I don't know, is that the real student of mine or not, you know. Mysterious, because they, they, are, they are like shy or they don't want to see me, you know, especially the men. Because in the uh, Middle East, they said the men and women cannot see each other, but women can, women can see, you know. So sometimes mysterious, okay. Sometimes they cheat also, they bring other people and talk to you, you know, so that's also wrong. Okay, next. The MOOCs report, so if you want to know, all these are the 10 most popular MOOCs starting from July 2019. And then you have this uh, report from here. This is from Dawal Shah. This is Class Central. If you go there, okay, can you go there not? Click there. Not? Is it fast enough? Not fast. Is it okay not? So for you, a first-time user, uh, if you want to develop a MOOC, you need to know something about <coughs> MOOCs. So you need to go to Class Central. Anything that you want to know about MOOCs, this is like the one-stop station there. And you will see all, every information about MOOCs is there. Okay, They will have 400 online courses. They have 10 most popular MOOCs. Uh, Coursera, they have the 10 most popular starting in June. So whatever information is in Class Central. So for you, if you want to change your way of teaching now, you want to go back after this session, you want to develop MOOCs, you see people's MOOC first. You see some good examples, like now I show you some good examples, some good attributes of MOOCs. Then you see the report, then only you can build the MOOCs. Okay, next. What happened? Uh? Okay, not the next screen. Okay, next. All right. So now we are going to teach you how to develop MOOCs. The first step is your course team to create a course. So, you create the course. Shafika will show you how to create MOOCs after this. So, this is the flow of building the whole process of MOOC. So, first you create. After this, uh, Shafika will show you how to create MOOCs. Then, after that, you need to get review from edX. They won't post, they won't publish your MOOCs yet. So actually, we just got uh, the grant last month, so we didn't manage to manage to do our full-blown MOOCs with edX because we cannot get it published unless we get it uh, uh, certified by the edX company first. So that's why, sorry, cannot show our MOOCs uh, yet. Then after that, the course team create a course, run edX review. You see, the edX must review. And then only can publish. 
and then the course team will review about the page preview and then the it will go out to then only you will get your uh, your your URL edX.org whatever course name let's say like myself is virtual reality or augmented reality dot organization then you will get the proper edX so this is the pro the process that you need to do first then only send to edX they must review first when they review it's okay because they want to keep the standard then when it's okay then only they will go to publish okay all right now i pass to shafika ah, okay watch the video first okay the video too fast no sound la welcome to edx i'm anant agarwal i'm the president of edx i'm also a professor of electrical engineering and computer science at mit online learning is revolutionizing the world Education will never be the same again, and edX is at the cutting edge of this revolution. So when you take edX courses online, you are part of this revolution. Online learning is the ultimate democratizer. When you learn on edX, you are joining a community. Imagine taking a class with 100,000 or more students. This is social. This is a lot of fun. I think you will enjoy the experience. At edX, it's about people. It's not about profit. For you, edX is about the best courses from the best schools and the best professors. Becoming a member of edX is easy. We're really excited to have you here. We're gonna get you started, quick three easy steps. Browse, choose, and have some fun. Registration takes seconds. And once you register, just browse the courses. When you find something that you like, click it. It's that easy. Choose wisely. You're selecting courses from the best schools all around the world. Make sure to check the prerequisites. Now you can choose your course and you're on your way. Welcome to the club. Now that you've signed up for a course, you can view courseware. The courseware is made up of great videos, automated feedback, and cool interactive features, all for self-paced learning. The interactives are designed to help you explore your understanding of key concepts. A big part of edX is getting instant feedback on your answers, frequently in the form of a green check mark. In a lot of questions, you can try as many times as you need to get that right answer. Courses can be tough. We make sure that they're rigorous but they can also be a lot of fun. A big part of edX is the social aspect. You can be as social as you want on the discussion boards. In our forums, there's an active community. It's not just the professors, students help each other out. A typical course can run a semester length, or about 12 weeks. At the end of that course, if you've met the course requirements, you can get a certificate of mastery. Once you've completed the course, you're part of our group of lifelong learners. edX's mission is to help you get a quality education. edX will increase access to learning for students such as yourself worldwide. This is fun, this is exciting, and this is revolutionary. Welcome to edX, come join us. So we choose edX because Thai uh, Cyber University already launched use edX, okay? So like uh, my country in Malaysia, we use open learning, another platform, okay? So, but from here, we use edX. Okay, now, uh, Shafika is going to do some activities how to do edX. Hi, uh, my name is Shafika. So today we will be showing you a tutorial on how to create MOOCs. So this will be a two-sided tutorial. One will be on the student side, where you will get to view a course. And another one is for, from a creator side, where you will get to create a course. So first, before we start, we will show you the student part, so you can view the course, and then we can learn how to make it. So first, all you need to go to is, this is uh, edX.org. This is only for students. So if you want to go create one, you have to go to uh, studio.edx.org, which is... So first, um, for those who didn't bring a laptop or anything, you can use your mobile phones to join. You just have to go to... Uh, to view, to view as a student site, uh, you go to just go to edx.org, and then you can just see all this.
Yes. So first, be, uh, for all those who don't have any accounts yet or anything, so is everybody in uh, edX.org, the website? Should I wait for a while before you join? Anybody is there already? edX.org. edx.org Anybody need some assistance or anything you get inside So can I get a show of hands who already entered the EDX website? Anybody already joined? Okay. <coughs> you joined really? You must have a Gmail account, huh? Hello. So Hello. So when you first for those who don't have an account, you just click register first. I'll just pop that. <coughs> just click register. Those who don't have account, go to register first. Register. student on this side. So this is the first thing you see. We've, uh, I've already uh, joined a course for you to see, but before that, you can see the multiple programs that they have. Like just now Dr. Razina uh, mentioned, there were three courses that she showed. Uh, in edX, there will be more than just three. There's over 30. Not too long either. Yeah, yeah, no? yeah. 
example of the course that I showed you and this is so this is the details so let's say if you join in a course you some this is a course by uh, Microsoft this is our introduc introduction to computer science so as a student you can join any course any course you want you can be from the, the pharmacy department or anything you can join computer science doesn't you don't need qualification or anything so you can join then you can see here upgrade and remaining courses. This is for certification you need. Mm -hmm. If you need certification, you can just sign up for it. And if you don't need certification, you can just go in and... Free. free. It's free. View the course. And then to view, then you can enroll the course. This is also under Microsoft. Microsoft does only offer one, uh, one course. They've got, they offer a lot more. So after this session, go back and what course you teach? Tourism. Okay, so go to tourism, please. Tourism. 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 Let's go up G. Alex is from MIT. Yes. Uh, Alex is from MIT and Harvard. Uh, they did a collaboration together. So this is one of the, this is the universities that are collaborating with uh, edX. So you can see uh, this MIT and Harvard, their main. And then Berkeley, Texas, Hong Kong uh, Polytechnic, British Columbia. There's so many. Not yet. Next year. Next on the year. way, on the way. On, on the way, way. On, on the way. way. Yeah. On the way. Thai cyber year. This is a strong man for. So, as you can see, it's over 2,400 <laughs> courses by all of this, all of this uh, universities. And then there's more. So, members. So, these are the members of the. You can see Microsoft and everyone. Yeah. Whole gate alone. <laughs> there's over 20 million. Then there's 20 million students sign up for edX and 70 million enrollments of courses. Mostly it's like that because it's free. So to show you uh, the list of courses, and then go go. This is all of the uh, courses there is. Now we have more. We have all from architecture, art, culture, and you like any and there's a list of uh, options to choose from you can just type that at the search bar at the top right you can just type what course you want like uh, even say just random map so when you teach not just powerpoint slides in your classroom only now. The new method of teaching also, please give your student this MOOC link. Go to MOOC, edX.org, and tell them, search whatever topic, and ask them to read from MOOCs itself, or TED Talk, or whatever, MOOCs. Because a lot of information can be found in MOOCs. So don't just depend on your PowerPoint slide only. That is old fashioned, throw away already. No more PowerPoint, you know? PowerPoint is dead. But PowerPoint can help you to develop good projects for assignment. 
my student develop good multimedia game based learning uh, assignment using PowerPoint, you'll be surprised. But for you as an instructor, try to use PowerPoint very little now. You use a lot of video, YouTube, you even make the list, you know, the make list uh, thing. So video, you do a lot of these uh, MOOCs, e-books, give them a lot of e-books, link, give them a lot of uh, PDF files in your Moodle. You have your M LMS, isn't it? You teach, you got LMS, you know? All you still got LMS, isn't it? Moodle. You know what is the Moodle or not? You know Moodle, right? Huh? You know Moodle or not? You know, okay. So in the Moodle, or your uh, learning management system, you must have uh, at least PDF files. The list is PDF. Then you must have YouTube link, a lot of YouTube link. Because students nowadays learn everything through YouTube. They want to cook one recipe also, they go to search YouTube. They want to do anything also, they search YouTube. So you also must follow their trend using YouTube also. Uh, okay, then. After that, the next one is MOOCs. You must give them MOOCs link. Ask them to show them that this is the edX.org. This is the student site. These are at least a bunch of courses. Is that only 40,000? Almost 40, 40,000. Is that only 40,000? 2,400. List of content that student can read from there. Okay. So this is so if you're from the student side and if you've already enrolled in a course, you can just see the course right here. This is to audit the course and get certification. You can click this audit. Stop anytime, can watch anytime, you can even uh, go back to your previous lesson to revise. Now they have an introduction. This is how um, uh, an, it, an edX course should look like. It should be simple, it should be packed, and it should be suitable for every every learner. That's what uh, MOOCs is made for. So it's modules 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so you have 14 weeks, let's say one semester 14 weeks. In Thailand also the same idea. Yeah? So uh, just one or two weeks to learn. But basically it's a seven semester break and then seven like that. So you can put in your seven weeks courses, you can do your own books. And then you can put all the link which we will show you now. Okay. How to create your books now. So to create your books. You have to go to another site which is under edX, but if you already have, if you already signed up, you can already use. So basically, you just go to studio.edX.org. The same process, same sign in process. Let's see, I'm going to show you. Okay, now you create your moves now. This is you as the creator now. The same one. Just sign in uh, just, uh, with Studio. your Google account, Facebook account, Microsoft account. Can, uh? Or if you've already signed up, okay. can, uh? yeah. can just, just check. sign in back. Sometimes uh, because you've already signed up just now, it can automatically log in for you. So we already have our own account, just sign in.
creating MOOCs. Just now, surely, student side. Now, you as a creator now. Okay, so I would like to mention again that when you create a course, you cannot post the course, it will not go live, you can only create the course under a library because your course will have to go through the edX team and then when they verify, they see that your con they see your content, they understand your content, understand your where you're from, your university that you're representing, and then they can only come back to you. Just like we show the process in the slide just now. That this is the process again. So they create a course, then the marketing team reviews the course, reviews the course run again, which means to see how long will your course go with or without the verification and certification. And then the edX publisher team will create an about page preview to see like uh, they will do maybe like a small survey to see how many people will be interested in your course that you've just created. And then if they see that people uh, give their reply, their replies are okay and everything, they will then uh, publish your page, they publish your own course, and you will get to name your course, let's say maybe Introduction to Computer Science like just now, they will shorten it to like ics.edx.org. It's just like that. Now to start, now this is the this is how you contact the edX team for you to make your own course so that they can verify. And then to start, you click the new library. It's very simple. You can let's say you can. Now we are teaching you to do your own moves. Are you with me, Anna? Or are you lost? No. Okay, Anna? Okay, Anna? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So you start first is your library name. Library name is your course name. Your own course name that you'll be creating. So for us, we already started with augmented reality. And then your organization. You type in your university without any spaces. Without space. USM. You name name any your university that you're representing, and then your library code. This is so that when people search your code, your for your course, it wouldn't be like let's say if your course is too long or too complicated for some people. That's why your library code comes in. It will be helpful for them to search. They can just type your library code on the search bar. Then you can just create. Anybody missing or lost or kind of? Anybody need help? Anybody need help or not? Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes. Anybody need help or not? It's okay, yeah. Huh? Huh? Question. Yeah. Uh, the library code can be used exactly the same as the course code. I mean. Ah yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Because you create your own code. Create your own code. But then you need to also know when you create the code, your code you cannot change the code again. It it's permanent the code. You create your code, but you must remember the code. Yes, that's why they have you have to make it short and simple so that people can remember. So anybody uh, need some help, we can go. The cost code will be a good idea. Your own cost code will be a good idea. Like QMP one two three. Your cost code. Huh? So can we proceed? Yeah. Can we proceed? Create. So we'll create the course. So this is how it will look like after you click your create button when you want to save. So this is um, this is very simple, the user interface. So it's for anybody. Anybody can use it. We have these three components, three new components. First one is for to add a video. Now to add a video, 
they only accept YouTube videos. They only accept URLs. See? They only accept URLs. So you can edit. See? They only take e URLs. You now for this video ID you can just add it. you can change the video ID soon. They also have um, advanced, advanced option. This is for for you. Let's say if you want to edit when you want your video to start, when your video you want your video to stop, or huh, this one you can choose if you want to make uh, your video to be downloadable or not. Okay. Huh? Usually people just uh, click yes if they allow or not, and then transcript and then the name. Which will come up? And then next, you can add more and more and more more comp uh, components. You can maybe add your own problem. See, there's so many options you can choose from. Okay, problem. From here. Okay. So first, go to text. Okay. 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 So I said to you just now, the first thing is title. So, what's the title of the text? The text you can choose from the HTML. You can choose either to do a code using the HTML code or you can just do a normal text. If you want to use a HTML code, you can use the raw HTML function and the iframe tool. And this is for you to just type, you know, write information on your course. Microsoft Word that you use, the interface is uh, almost the same. You make it bold, italic. This is the font size, then you make it this big. Three to four only. 
he cannot write until 10 learning outcome. How he want to achieve 10 learning outcome in two hours, in three hours lesson? It's impossible. So sometimes I see some books got five, um, seven, eight learning outcomes. That is really impossible to achieve. You know? So you need to write at least uh, the most is three to four for one lesson. Okay? And your learning outcome must come from the simple to the hardest. The last learning outcome will be like evaluation or reflection, you know, or some uh, assessment part. The beginning one will be like cognitive level, like comprehension, uh, knowledge level. So your learning outcome must flow from the easy step right up to the other step. Not straight away evaluate this, this, this. Beginning already start to evaluate already. It's, you know, sometimes people write learning outcome the other way around, topsy-turvy, you know. So you, as a teacher, as an instructor, you uh, first you write the easy one like define or operationalize the definition uh, define, give the definition of terms first. You ask the students to define the term first. Then after that, you ask uh, comprehension level. How do you apply this, this term? Give examples. Then after that, we will ask them to, we will assess them, you know, evaluate them. So as a learning outcome, you must write this way. Not simply just go quiz. Answer this quiz. Number one, answer this quiz. Or maybe if you want to do free test, never mind. If that's, is that the case? You know, not? Ah, I see some crazy moves <laughs> sometimes, you know? Okay, next. So you do the text. After the text, then you need come to, you can put in the content, the body, you know? Your notes in the text. You can put the notes, whatever just the title. be on the front of your like when people click on your course this is going to be your main page people will see this this is called the landing page the first front page is called the landing page so your landing page must make it simple and friendly okay. understand huh? Try making uh, a problem using checkbox. Okay. You can edit your own first. They give you, uh, they type it for you. Then you can maybe say question. Thank you. 
Make it uh, for just now. You see, then you can edit it to make the answer two answers. You can click like this. To, it makes it two answers. So when you click one of this, or you can you can make you can choose. Okay, but you just you pick one. The check box you need to do a proper check box. Okay, so you will click that. I suggest you click the first one. And then you can submit and see maybe the answer incorrect. You can submit this. We will give you answer your own option. You will do your own answer. Okay, na? Okay. Then this. Delete this. Nah. If you delete this, and then you redo. So everything you just have to click the edit and write the question yourself. Then you determine how your question turns out. You determine how your answer turns out. This is all up to you. This is your choice. Your your course. They give you a template so you can just follow and copy and paste your own questions. So, uh, before the semester start, you already designed 14 weeks course in MOOCs. Your whole semester course in one MOOC. So, to do it, Could it takes a while, but when you teach in the class, it's very easy. Right? Could it set it to Yes? I was just wondering if I could set it to to partial grading to to have the partial score for, for the checkbox. No checkbox. For what, like uh, you have two answers two and answer. then the student only answer one and then get one score if they select both of them and then they get two scores. Could I set that? I think they can. They can. They yes. Can yes. Set. They can. can set. They can set. Yeah. Can. But just now you want two scores, right? Yeah. Yes. You can set, you can set. Let me show you. They give you this X. You can just copy paste. Select two, you still get the correct answer. Multiple choice, you can select also. Then choose one. Let's say lah. Let's say this is the correct answer. Is this one? The one you put the X is going to be the answer that gets you the point. So let's say if you select this, then your answer. You get the correct point. It's like a small quiz for you. So in every course, you must have a short formative question. In every course, you you give the topic, and then you give quiz. Two questions, three questions is enough. Don't give under ten questions. You know. So every topic, two or three questions. Then every topic, two or three questions. You can even ask them to watch this video. Then you ask. What do you think about this video? You know, give comment about this video. You know, or you can sh uh, show the video after a few seconds. You stop that video. You ask the question, and then you ask them to watch again. You stop the video, and then you ask the question. So you can break break the video. No need to watch the whole video. Then only ask question. They forget everything. You know, not. So this is how you do moves because you are not there, but you. 
expect the MOOCs to tell the student. So you must change your mindset that you are interpreting that you act the MOOC as the teacher now, as the facilitator. You know, it's different. It's different. Like you teach in the class where you can talk to the student, you can interact, stop in between. But this one, you are not there. You are virtually there. So now you have to change your mindset that you are not in front of the classroom, but you are acting like you are the teacher. It's very difficult, you know, beginning for me also to do a MOOC because I assume that people know. But when I do my MOOC. The student will ask me, hey, what is this? Like, hey, don't know this. You know, keep asking, this button is for what? This button is for this. Then I realize, oh, I must tell them every detail so that you know. You know? Okay, next. So, this is, edX is simple. Just three things. Text, uh, quiz, text, quiz, and then you can have the... Just add the image and add videos. You can your own code where you can make your own text, where you can make your own videos using uh, the HTML code. Then the next page, the next page is the front page. where they read your course first. See? This one is what you will learn. This like it this is the first page so when you want to join course, what you will be adding to your course, what is your course about, which university you're from, and then uh, what you'll be teaching if you'll be providing certification, if you'll be pro uh, if your certification will need cost, how much is the cost, by whom, then you will. Yeah, so once you create the front page, you have to email staff to create costs. They have to review your course. Then we can proceed. If not, they cannot proceed right now. Right now, we can start here. We cannot proceed because they won't 
This is just to show you the first page. Yeah, yeah? So you have to email them to certify them in the procedure. Studio dash request at edx.org. And after you've done your your preview, that's why it's important your preview for the to impress the edX uh, team, your edX editor and everything. You email them this, and then you put in the link to your studio, and then you add in your uh, your email name, this, your course name, your your username, sorry, your username. Adding your username, what you're creating, all the information, the link, the link to your edX Studio, your own home, and they will review it. Once they review it, they will come back to you. I think in around uh, 36 to or maybe 48 hours. Usually, 48 hours, they'll come back to you and they will reread you back on what course and everything they if they given you the green light for you to go and continue. Any question or not? So it's actually very simple. Just the front page is just text editor and then the video and then the quiz or the problem. So it's up to you only as a lecturer to decide what you want to put. But I say to you the learning outcome is very important. And then so you write the learning outcome and then after that you put in the text, your content. The topic, topic, topic. So 14 topics or 10 topics you want to cover. Write all your 10 topics. By the end of the lesson, the students will be able to do this, blah, 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 blah. 10, 10 topics, that's it. And then after that, you put your uh, instructor's uh, profile at the end. Then after that, you can put the quiz later on. When they review your content first. They review the front page. Once you get the license, you can go continue. Then only you can put it to your place. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah, after that. Any, any question or not? Okay. After this, only we will teach you AR to put into edX. Please, we didn't do A up here. We teach you the moves first. How to do moves first. So now is you create the move first, the platform first. After this, at 2.45, we will teach you to do AR. The topic is on AR. So you can have topic on tourism, you can have topic on cooking, you can have uh, culinary, you can have sports, you can have so many. But my topic is on augmented reality. So you will come in afterwards at 2.45, uh, is it? What? Finish? Yes, you can come back in at 2.45. 2.45, okay. <coughs> the second okay. session, we continue from here, we show you AR Max. So now you understand how to create MOOCs, <coughs> at least you have some uh, picture of how to create MOOCs. Okay? So, here we teach you edX. We have open learning, we have uh, C books, Coursera, okay? We have uh, what are the other books? Open learning. Open learning, yeah, open learning. Okay. But I think this uh, open learning is simple also, but this edX looks very simple to me also. Just one editor and just bang bang in all everything. Okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for Dr. Rosina. Uh, for the first session, we learned more about MOOC and how to create MOOC in edX, right? And the next uh, session, we, we will start to to like uh, to build or to learn about how to integrate AR with MOOC. Okay, we will uh, wait around uh, 15 minutes. And we'll be back to to this this section around uh, two p.m. and uh, two forty-five p.m. Thank you so much. Thank you.